this podcast is going to cover so many subjects, health and fitness, mental health, mindset, being a mum, business, everything will be covered on this podcast. So join me bi-weekly for an amazing journey through life. Welcome to the Full Cup of Tea podcast. Hi Terry, how are you? You good? Yeah, I'm really, really good. Got a bit of a cold at the minute, but we're, we're, we're soldiering through as we do. Well, that's all we can do, isn't it? I am literally so excited to have you on my podcast. I've followed you for ages on Instagram. I know obviously lads that have trained with you, who you've worked with. You're such an inspiration, not just on Instagram. I mean, obviously I know you from like your chefing and all the things that you've you've done. And yeah, I just, I just feel like you'd be really, really good for the people out there who listen to my podcast. I think your story everything you've achieved, everything you're achieving and the, the things that you've gone through in your life will, will help and inspire so many people who are probably sat at home thinking they're stuck in a rut or can't make any changes. So I just think me and you having a deep conversation about life, about past, about future is going to help so many people. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's always a strange one, isn't it, when someone says it's your story's inspiring or you can inspire other people and things like that. I always, you know, it's... Um, it's something that I don't really think about, but when it when it is said, it's it's always a, a nice compliment to hear because I have been in those crap places, you know, and I have been where a lot of people feel like they probably are right now, and I've come out the other side and done something with my life, you know, I made something of myself. Um, so yeah, it's going to be good to to delve into it, and you know, you get to ask some things, I get to answer some things, and yeah, we'll and and I also feel like. So many men sit in silence and suffer in silence. And I think when men actually speak out, you know, it helps other people speak out. It helps other people have hope and, and aspiration. So that's why I think it'll be really nice to hear your story. So if you want to tell us a little bit of background information, obviously I know it, but the audience don't. So if you want to go right back and I'll obviously ask you some questions in between and, yeah, yeah just, you know, tell us about you, Chris. Yeah, of course, of course. So I am literally just your typical council estate kid, you know, brought up on a council estate in Mexborough um, by my parents, you know, who um, always tried the best, you know. I were, again, if we run back to the old council estate children, we all knew how to get in trouble a little yeah. bit, didn't we? I think <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's a common... Keep ourselves entertained. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. It's a common denominator between us all, I think, is uh, how to get in trouble when you live on a council estate. Um, so, yeah, I had... Um, I had a, what I would call a, a good upbringing, you know, based on where we were from. I had a good circle of friends. Some of us still some of my best friends now, you know, and uh, I spent some of the, the best times of my life as a young kid, um, you know, in Mexborough, running around, being a little terror away in a terror at times, <laughs> yeah. um, and just creating memories with my friends, you know, and then I weren't always the best at school. Um, pretty much every school report said I was smart and intelligent, but I was also a clown. Um, and the last year of school, I never really turned up. You know, I did my exams, got out of it what I needed to. Um, my intention was always to go in the military. And so I joined the military when I left school. Um, what age were you then? Six? So I was 17, 17. when I enrolled, yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to go to college for a little while first because he intended on joining the military when I was probably post 20, go to college, get some form of extra education that I could fall back on. And then 9-11 happened. Um, and that is literally why and what made me join earlier. Yeah. So I was going to college one morning, and I always remember my mum rung me and said, come back home and watch this quick. And um, I'm sure it was about 8, 8.30 a.m. in the morning, UK time. Uh, so I went home, obviously wondering what had gone on. Um, and it were on the TV, and I sat there and watched it with mum for a couple of hours. And I just thought, that's it, that's, that's my calling. That's what I want to do. I want to be involved in this. Um, joined the military. Um, that was September. In December, I was a, a British soldier, um, wow. you know, going into basic training. So, yeah, big um, change in how I envisaged joining the army. Yeah. Um, and the way it came around. But I'm and at a so young age as well. Yeah, at a very young age. Um, but I'm ever so thankful that I did go and do that, you know, and it turned me from a boy to a man, you know, pretty much overnight. But you've seen a lot of things. Uh, did you go to, like, um, yeah, Iraq? Yeah, Iraq, Afghan, yeah. Um, Todd out there. Um, so you do see, you know, there's a lot of things that are great memories yeah. and a lot of things that are not so great memories, you know. It took me a lot of time to speak about things like that. 
as you can imagine. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's a big stigma around now about men not speaking out. Um, and it's not until this day and age, I think, that we really understand how important and how critical it is, you know, that, that men, regardless of how strong you are or feel you are as an individual, it is important to speak out. And I learned my lesson. Um, you know, I'm sure we'll get on to that. But I learned my lesson from not speaking out and what it can do. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, I'm one of the first people to advocate for doing that. I, I love that, yeah. I, love I think that. it's a huge people part. People see you like, oh, big, yeah. strong guy with tattoos. Exactly. And, and then you have this, like, I don't know, like, perception of someone like that, don't you? They don't. And then people also have the perception, I can't look like I'm of not course. this big, strong man. It's like, it's such a, such a... It's all a persona. Yeah, that's you know, it. I, I train, yeah. I train for my own um, self-satisfaction. Yeah. You know, I like to be in shape. I like to look a certain way. Yeah. And obviously I compete. Um, but... I do get that thing that people may feel, well, you can't really speak if you look yeah. in that manner of way. And yeah. it, that's, it's just not true. You know, we can all speak. It's just about you as an individual, about you getting to sit in a chair like this yeah. or, you know, in different surroundings and get out there what's necessary, you know. Do you think, like, um, <laughs> like, the, like army and stuff, did you think, like, did you stay there leave because it were affecting your mental health or, you know, did you just leave because your time were up or what age did you leave the, the military? So I was in five and a half years. Yeah. Um, I had planned to do 12 years. My, my whole plan was to do 12 years, get an half pension and come out. Yeah. Um, but the tours that I did, I did back to back. So yeah. I got very little time between them. So you're going from one, like, war-torn country to another. Yeah. Really bad then, weren't it? And yeah, I, I mean, I was in those places at the height of things happening. Yeah. You know, Iraq, I was out there before it all really started happening. I went out in the January and it kicked off fully in the March. So I'd already been out there a couple of months, you know. Um, and it's the dregs of the earth. like, And I mean that in the nicest sense to the Iraqi people or anyone like that that yeah. might even for a second, you know, get a glimpse of this podcast. But the place itself was so war torn and battered to the ground. Yeah. It was eye opening instantaneously. Um, and I wouldn't wish that on anyone. No, it's awful. I mean, we're going through something now again, aren't we? But it's on another subject. But yeah, yeah. So, so you've, you've obviously done your tour in Iraq and you've, you see, you've decided to come out and then, like, what, what were next for you then? What, what? So, yeah, because I'd, because I'd come out in the circumstances that I had. Um, I knew that mentally I wasn't quite right. I was never going to admit it at that time. Yeah. You know, I'm a young kid still at the time, still only 23 years old coming oh, up. Oh, yeah, still a baby. Um, still plenty of life in front of me. And I'd just come out of the military, you know, I'd been where I'd been. And you kind of don't want to, or you don't feel like you can talk about it. You don't want to talk about it because, you know, it makes you look weak. Yeah. It makes you look a whole host of things. That's what a lot of people um, do. They don't talk about them. They mask it with other things. Exactly. Exactly that. And so you, you have all these feelings, but you just kind of get on with life. So I kind of didn't know what I wanted to do. Look as it happens. My mum's been in hospitality for 35 years, and she was at a restaurant, um, part of management, and just said, well, you know, why don't you just come and help us out for a little bit? It'll give you something to do and just keep you occupied and put some money in your pocket. There's no, like, pressure for you to come. And yeah. there's no pressure for you to do anything particular while you're there, so to speak, just to help out. Um, so I went there. Um, I w like I say, I was fortunate to have my mum in that position. Um, and then from there, it, look as it happens, it turned out or a dab and with a frying pan. Well. And then <laughs> literally that's how I got to be a chef. Um Obviously, from Which, there. for anyone that doesn't know, obviously, we don't know yet because we haven't got that far into it. Sorry, but you are an amazing chef, aren't you? At the Big Smoke. Yep. Um, I've had there, so I know it's good. I can vouch for it. Um, and that's what you do as well as your other things. But yeah, yeah. So we've, we've come out army. You've started to to like dip into to chefing, yep. which you now do. Um, so what happened during, you know, the time between, like, now and you, you're starting your chefing? So, yeah, I got, I got into it, like I say, as we've just gone over, by being fortunate enough with, to have my mum in that position. Turns out I were all right with a frying pan, you know, and then that just led on to more. I did some night college to, obviously, one night a week, just 
progressed my skills and progressively, you know, I, I was starting from nothing. This is nothing. Yeah. It's totally alien to anything I'd done before. You yeah. know, I've gone from being in the army, being yeah. in the military and carrying a gun around for months in a war-torn country to <laughs> having a steak on a grill or in a frying pan. Yeah. You know? So it's a bit of a, yeah, a whirlwind different. of a change yeah. in direction. Um, and then, so I'd, I'd been going to night college, just doing one day a week. Um, and I was there for quite a large period of time of where I went from just helping out to being the head chef over a, a period yeah. of about three years. Um, so things moved fairly quick. Um, and then from there, I've had the pleasure of working in some some great establishments. Um, you know, there'll be uh, relish. So Nick Hinton, I'm sure you know Nick yeah, as well. well that's right. um, you know, I've I've worked for Nick a couple of times. Uh, give a lot of credit to him. Great man. Um, helped me no end. Um, and then other places as well. So I've worked at Bortries, Coleman Steakhouse before it was Bortries. Yeah. Um, you know, I've done a bit of time on agency at Crown Hotel, things like that. And just really nurtured my skills working in various places. Yeah. Um, I then I got a little bit bored of chefing for a little while. Um, and I ended up going to work at a restaurant called Tickle Trout at Barlow. Um, so it's a fine dining rosette restaurant. I went and worked there as general manager. I was taken on as general manager and taken on under the wing of the owner there, who's a um, very highly decorated chef. Um, and I, I managed that for a couple of years. Um, and I really enjoyed doing that side of things as well. So I'd, I'd broadened my scope of being a, from just being a chef yeah. to being able to do the whole of the business yeah, yeah, yeah. from top yeah. to bottom. Um, so I really enjoyed that. And then I was offered the opportunity uh, by my current bosses um, at the Big Smoke. Um, they had this kind of dream and vision on vision, a bit of paper. Yeah. And we all sat together, looked at it, um, looked at what I bring to it, how we could do it and things like that. Um, that was four years ago. We're still there now, um, you know. We're still busy. There's still people coming through the doors all the time, yeah. and it it's still got what I would hope to have a, a growing reputation because we are starting to do things a little bit differently now. You know, and we're now branching out into pizzas, and um, actually from tomorrow we're opening for bre again, opening for breakfast on oh, yeah. a Saturday from tomorrow. Yeah, so the Big Smokes version of breakfast. We've now got a mobile burger van. That's able to go out to do functions. I mean, that's at Rotherham show in September. It's done multiple functions already. So, you know, we, we can be hired for weddings that's and good, things like that yeah, and parties. So it's, you know, we are constantly trying to evolve and move with times and it keeps my thinking shoes on yeah. because it's, you know, it is me who comes up with all the menus yeah, and everything. Yeah, do you think like, obviously from you going to the army to then obviously coming to a new passion of cooking, that was sort of, your way of sort of channeling whatever was going on in your mind from obviously being in the army and like past trauma. Do you think like that was how you channeled your thoughts and feelings through your creativity of your cooking? I believe so, yeah. I yeah. believe that it, it's a weird, honestly, it's a weird one when it comes to cooking because you either love it. I love cooking. Or you cooking. hate it. I love it. It's my peace time. Yeah, I can't that's explain it. It's so my... It's, um, so like you were picking up on them with the creativity side of things, it, it keeps you mentally stimulated. Yeah. So I'm moving from one dish to the next, and yeah. I'm thinking, right, what's that like? How does it taste? How can I improve that? And then on to the next. And then I'll come back to that dish a week later with a new and improved version, yeah. see if that's right. Now what do we need to tweak to get it just perfect? And that's what being a, a good chef entails. You know, it's, it's being able to put something together, spot yeah. that it's not correct, bring it back to the table, with something different and getting it perfect and that's that's the 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 beauty of the craft in it is yeah. is doing that and as well you like it's not i like cooking for other people just in general but it's like it's someone else is really enjoying it you get like i don't know it's like a weird feeling that's a good else, feeling isn't yeah it? like you it's know. a nice feeling someone's enjoying your food and then um, 95 percent of the time i have to say 95 yeah because there's always someone yeah, that doesn't, you, you know and everyone's you, taste looks different and well, standards that's expectations it. and Sometimes, you know, as, as bad as it may sound is, sometimes chefs do have an off day. Yeah, they are human. Oh, 100%, and, yeah. And I get it. You know, I've gone yeah. to one place before I had a brilliant meal. Next yeah, time, I have, not I so great. That. But it never puts me off. Yeah. Because I, I know coming from that background. That yeah, it can people happen. Yeah. do have an off day. They are human. But it's, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy one cooking because it is something that you really do 
love or hate, yeah. but it helped me through some really difficult times. Um, times that took me a lot of years to speak about with other people yeah. um, that people never even knew about. I mean, there's, there's probably things that we might speak about today that some of the closest people to me don't even know. And yeah, that's, that's just because I've spoke about them and had dialect about those things with the correct people. Yeah. And sometimes the people that are closest to you are not the correct people to speak about that with. No, definitely Sometimes not. it takes a stranger. 100%. And so I feel like that's where sometimes you get like the best sort of feedback and advice from stre- people who aren't your friends. Yeah, yeah. Some Sometimes just random people. It could be people on Instagram. It can be a doctor in, a, in an office. It could be, you know, someone that you meet at a festival it, yeah 100 percent. literally can, that. can be that. any form of stranger in any, any form walk of talking of life. as well yeah like any form of talking like a lot of people don't talk about how the f- especially men i mean a lot of women do, don't either but more men hold a lot of things in and they don't tend to express what's going on in their head and that's where they end up having their head controlled you know so badly really yeah, when if you just spoke about it like oh wow yeah he feels like that or she feels like that it's it opens a whole new it does and it's amazing well it's amazing how many people feel the same way and how many people yeah. are also not talking about yeah. it yeah and it, it just takes that one domino to drop yeah it does and that's it it can set off a whole great chain of reaction that has a good positive ending to I it i agree and so be so we've, we've obviously covered the chef in and you know you've started your chef in you've continued to do it you're absolutely amazing in between all that was the other stuff went on in your life in the background? Have you had breaks from chefing? As because I know that I know from obviously your Instagram, you you do the PT and competition. You know you're physically in really good shape. You do nutrition plan. So you know we've got the obviously the sh- Chris the the chef. Yeah, is the other things that have gone on during that period. You know that you'd like to share and yeah, tell yeah. Us about. So I'll, I'll go back to we'll start with the bad stuff first. So um. I've been to prison, you know, that did happen, early 2010s. Um, I was involved in a case to do with drugs. You know, I'm not going to sit here and paint a rosy picture about anything because I'm not that individual, you know. I've not always been a good individual and I haven't always done good things. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that or tell anybody that tunes into this. Some of the best people have the worst well. past. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I think um, that played um, also a big part in defining who I have tried to become. I'm not, yeah. say, not going to say become, because yeah. there's still things no. that we're all working on day in, day yeah, out to better ourselves. Yeah, 100%, I agree. But who I've tried to become. So I went to uh, prison in 2010 um, as part of a, a drugs offence, um, and I served just under two years. Um, I got just under four years. Uh, I had to appeal that because originally I got five and a half. Um, but the military came in handy, gave me a good reference, um, and said I was a good soldier, and that kind of got it took down. And um, so yeah, that were I mean that was a part of my life where I had to really sit and reflect. Yeah. You know, I know I'm not. Don't get me wrong. I'm again. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that prison is this or it's that or it's the other. It really isn't a difficult place to be, yeah. and I understand why people keep going back, back yeah. because when you're getting warm in the winter. You've got a TV, you've got music, and you're getting fed three meals a day with hot drinks. Like, yeah. <laughs> if you're in a really bad situation in life, that can solve that a few comfort. problems. Honestly, really, it, isn't it, it really can. So I see why people go back. Yeah, it's not something that I want to go back to. Yeah, let me just clear <laughs> yeah. clear that yeah, up right yeah. now. Yeah, it's not a part of my life that was enjoyable. Yeah. you know, um, it was eye opening in the fact that. I needed to make some decisions about myself and about my life. And that's when I re- it really came to the fore about me speaking to people um, about, you know, past things. Yeah. Um, and that, I used that time wisely to do that. I also used that time, I'd, I'd gotten into training just before that previous anyway. So I used that time to study. I spent a lot of time studying, doing courses. You know, I, I took the system for what I could yeah. um, in regards to they paid for me an education. Yeah. Um, and I took qualifications. more people would do that. Well, I took qualifications out of there that I put, that some of them don't even exist on paper anymore. Yeah. Um, but I've got them out of there and through an educational system. Um, so I used that system um, to the best of my ability to get what I could out of it. Um, 
So I was there till 2012, obviously got released. Um, luckily enough, again, I got straight back into working, being a chef. Yeah. Um, but during that period of time then, I then spent a lot of time studying, studying bodybuilding, training, um, health, nutrition, food. Obviously, part of being a chef, I, I'm involved in food, food anyway. Yeah. So just to expand my knowledge into the other side of it, the nutritional values, macros, calories, things like that. Yeah. So I spent a lot, hell of a lot of time and a hell of a lot of money <laughs> um, doing that. But I knew it would hopefully, in the end, lead to more. Um, and I'm, I'm blessed now, you know, that it has. You know, I've, I've worked with some, some wonderful people. I know, obviously, you know Jamie. Yeah, um, yeah. I've done some work with Jamie. Yeah, for his boxing. Um, I worked with a guy, another guy from Doncaster called Mark Bennett, bad news, um, who I did all of his fight camps. Um, I think he won seven and lost one. Um, he boxed during COVID on Eddie Earns matchroom cards and things like Brilliant. that. Um, I've worked with multiple athletes, you know. This is what I like because obviously... You've gone from obviously being in a prison cell to be able to reset yourself. You've used your time. Not everybody does it. I wish they would because, <laughs> you know, reset yourself. And you've gone on to retrain in something totally different. Yep. It's just like, so I, th I just feel like it's just so like inspiring. And then you're then, you've turned a negative into a positive and then you're helping so many other people, obviously with the training camps and the boxing and then just day-to-day -day people as well. You yeah, have, yeah. Don't you? yeah, you know, I've... Like I said, I mentioned those two guys because they're, they're yeah. pro sports people but, yeah. that I've helped. But then I help a host of people from around the country. You know, I've got clients at, at current who I'm one to one in the gym with that these guys are 60 year plus. Yeah. Um, and I know I'd, I'd mentioned to you earlier, I prefer the one to ones, I prefer people of um, my age or above. Yeah. You know, now, the reason being is because these people are generally people that are doing it for the correct reasons, yeah. that want to get healthy. Um, extend life expectancy, you know, um, delve into the blood work and find out how the body is, yeah. how it's reacting to certain things, um, and to just generally improve their way of life for the family and the friends around yeah, them. Yeah, I love that. So I, I really enjoy helping those people, and they're the ones that I spend the time one to one with. Um, I I'm also do some online coaching. I have quite a number of clients. You know, I've got three clients in the next eight to ten weeks all competing, um, as well as myself. Yeah, you've competed before, have right? Well, yeah. I have, yeah. I've decided that I'm going to compete. You're going to do it again. Compete again later this year. That's that's news that I've kept to myself anyway. Um, but yeah, I've, I've competed. I'm current Fit X British champion, um, 2023. I finished fourth in PCA um, in their finals, which I believe was the biggest finals that's, that's been held on British shores. Um, I finished fourth there. I've done 15 bodybuilding shows. I've won eight. Wow. Um, I've won eight. I've never placed outside the top four. Um, so I've built up a decent, you know, yeah. um, background doing that now as well. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not the best in the country, but there's a lot of people who... Um, You're transforming lives. You yeah, don't have to be the best who, in the country. You're who helping. look to me yeah. for advice, advice yeah. based on... Even me. <laughs> yeah, that's for it. The men, I mean, uh, you follow I mean, my plan, yeah. yeah we've been we've chatting had, about... Yeah. We've had messages between yeah. us and, you know, I know... Yeah. I'm I'm just currently helping you with a couple of little bits yeah. just to, just for you to further yourself yeah, and advance yeah. things and I think it's it's always nice you know um, not everything has to cost in life yeah. sometimes you can just give back yeah for the sake and you of do get giving back, back but you get it back don't yes. you like not everything has to be there's a lot of people I think on like social media that there's just it's just pure money and greed but then that'll end eventually it's like me when I started my diet business did it for free yeah, for yeah. a year. And then look how it changed my life. That's it. I didn't go intentionally helping people lose weight for money. It just happened to happen after I'd started this diet business for free. Exactly. It, it comes back. I think being kind and helpful, not everybody is in them certain situations. So just helping, it does come back to you. Does, yeah, of course. It, 100 it, it does. does. And I think, like, like we've just picked up on then, I think sometimes there's just there's certain times and certain moments and certain individuals and people that you can give something for yeah. a little tough and you're going to get more back, back from, from that. that. Yeah than by charging them yeah, or agree. asking for something, you know. And even if it's just in a manner of respect, yeah. sometimes respect just is worth... Just a little conversation sometimes. Sometimes respect yeah. is worth much more than I anything agree. else. Do you feel like, like, I mean, for me, obviously talking to you, I feel like you sort of, 
really do try and channel yourself into something that you're really passionate about and I feel like does that help you is that something you would recommend to people because I feel like mine is like I have obviously dined down times as you probably do but I channel myself into my business I channel myself into helping other people I feel like that really helps and I feel like some people sort of can sit at home sometimes and they don't have that passion or they don't have that or they don't think they have should I say yeah. don't think they've got that passion to to do that or transform their life I mean what what's your thoughts on that with regards to like someone who's sat there thinking like I'm in this rut or I'm in a prison cell or I'm in this is this is me like yeah. it, it's not I think you have to look at it as although the situation that you're in may be bad there is always someone worse yeah you're not homeless yeah you're not in a third world country I mean country. if you are homeless you can still not yeah. be homeless can't you can yeah. still not but yeah. there's, there's ways and yes. there's means yeah I mean we're not in a third world country where we're all starving yeah. like there's you know we see there's children there. all over yeah. the place doing things like that um, there's lots of other circumstances that will be worse than yours yeah now you can either excuse me channel your mind to accept that that is just the way it is yeah. And that that's your life. Or you can channel it into something that you love. Or even just trying to turn it around. Yeah. And if you give it everything, at some point, something it will, will click. Yeah, It I will agree. click. And I, I honestly, truly believe that something will click, provided you give it everything. Yeah. And... It will happen. You've just got to have that little tiny bit of a seed, I think. Yeah, I always that's say it. To people, you might look like you've got no hope. I've been in them places. You, you've probably been in a place yep. where you think, I'm, not, I'm, I'm in this rut now. You've just got that one little tiny seed that you think, right, I can do this. And it will, it, I know it's very cliche or whatever, but it does. If you could just have that tiny little bit of hope and think, right, I'm going to do this, but it has to come from you. It's got to be here. Yeah. It has to no be here. One, no one can, I think a lot of people are, sit in sort of, sit with herself sometimes and think this is me this is who I am and this is how I've got to be Re and, and waiting for someone to save them yeah I think and it don't happen it I've just done not that's it and I think what you've got is you've got a, a whole host of people who are in that situation and they're waiting for someone to yeah. put an arm out and give them a chance yeah but not all the time that's going to happen no. now you have to create an opportunity for that individual to give you chance yeah and show them that if they give you that little bit of hope yeah and that opportunity that you will capitalise on it and you will give 100%. everything back to show that their faith in you and that tiny bit of hope is something that they've done correct and that you will give everything to bring that back to life and to bring yourself back yeah, to life. I and agree. it's, it's um, don't get me wrong, it's hard to do. Yeah, it, it is. Because um, some people, you know, I'm not going to say everyone suffers the same because we don't. No. You know, what... what I might take as something bad. Someone else yeah. might take twice as bad. Bad, yeah, I agree. But, you, you know, we all have, when it comes to hope, the hope that we all have is the same amount. Completely. You know what I mean? It's your, your vision of this amount of hope is my same vision of this amount yeah. of hope. But it's how we grow this yeah. into as, a larger people, scale. Yeah. And I think channeling everything you have into something that you feel is a process that you can love yeah. will help. I and agree. I mean, Even what, if it's a small change, yeah, it doesn't have to be anything. It doesn't have to be helping people. It doesn't have to be cooking. It doesn't have to be anything that we've really talked about. It's just something that you feel like you would enjoy. Something that you feel like will change your circumstances. That, that's what I feel like. It's change yours or somebody yeah, else's. Yeah, or someone else's. Yeah. Um, give clothes to charity. Yeah. It's a great one. Yeah. Rather than throw them in the bin. Yeah. Just go and give them to charity because someone else is going to go in and get that. That might not have a lot of money and might not have. <laughs> A lot of great things in life. For them, I love that one thing yeah. that you've given. Yeah. And, and just being kind as well. It, yeah. Just being nice, just smiling at someone. I, I yeah, just yeah, feel yeah. like just little things as well. Like you smile at someone, they smile back, it makes you feel good about yourself. It does. And people just think, oh, well, that's just something small, but it's not. It's actually a nice, it's an actually a really nice feeling. It is. Isn't it? And don't, don't get me wrong, there's times when everybody in the world, you, you don't want to smile. No. You don't want to be happy. You don't want to have conversation. And, and you don't have to. But the best thing to do at those times, I always find, is to just be within yourself. Yeah. You know, don't affect anyone else's day negatively. Yeah. Let them get on yeah. with theirs. You'll, and then yeah. tomorrow's a new start. That's what I'm always you know? like all the time. <laughs> You've got, and, and sometimes as well, 
just focusing on you sometimes. And I always say this, like I was selfish for a year. We'll go into that in a minute actually about obviously the sober and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But I was selfish really, I just a year, I put myself first. I've got kids, I've got business, but I had to put myself first to be the best version of me for those. I did that and now I'm, I am the best version of me for those people. So being a little bit selfish sometimes benefits everybody in the long it run. It does. And people don't see that sometimes. Yeah, and, and like you've just picked up on there, by you doing that and you becoming a little bit more within yourself and being a little bit more selfish and about you, that has probably brought on your business and your yeah. kids. Yeah, home everything. life tenfold yeah. as well as your home life and personal life yeah. and it, it's finding that fine balance you know it really is um, of where you want to channel your energy you don't always need to channel it into yourself you don't always need to channel it into another individual yeah. but channel it into something, something that yeah. you love or feel you can fall in love with yeah, and I it agree. will help massively 100%. massively now let's talk about. I mean, we've both we've, we've both obviously on each of us social media. So we both like did like the whole like the sober thing. We've both drank before. We've both had drugs before. Yep. Did obviously th obviously throughout obviously from the army to your chef into your PT into the prison. Was there a sort of a struggle with alcohol, drugs? I mean, we've all done, I've done it. I mean, most people have, they've been brought through a council state, I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah. But like, I mean, even normal people, if you know, people are normal, say. yeah. Um, but I think a lot of us nowadays, and, this, and people still do it now, mask a lot of trauma, a lot of things going on in their life with alcohol and drugs. 100%. You can still channel your stuff like you did all your chefing and you channeled it into that, but there were, there's always, I think, like me with business, I, I channeled that for 12 years, but I still like to drink. I still end up having cocaine and stuff like that with my friends and stuff like that because I was still trying to mask something. Even though I were channeling things yeah. into a positive, there was still always that there. Something during And life. I feel like so many people go through life like that without actually having to, well, without actually not speaking about the fact that, right, I am good at this and I'm doing this, but I'm also doing this. I've got a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't mean just an addiction. I just mean a problem with ma using that to mask something. Yeah, um, a big part of my life. You know, uh, I'm not going to lie on that one. When people say, you know, I've, I've, you know, I would do it. I've done a bit of cocaine with my mates. I mean, I've spent tens of thousands, probably into a hundred. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, uh, yeah. There's a lot of people have. I was, yeah, I was, I was bad. Like, really bad. Um, and I think, if I look back at it now, um, I think majority of that stemmed from my time in the military. Yeah. Not so much because I didn't enjoy it, because I absolutely loved it. You know, the, It's the trauma. I've got medals, uh, medals and pictures all framed at home, and they are pride of place in my house. It's a big part of my life, and it's one of my proudest moments. Yeah. Certainly... You know, I know it is my uh, my mum's as well. Yeah. Um, but I think what you experience in there sometimes, depending yeah. on where you've been, you know, I was in at a time when things were yeah. really rough. Um, and I think a lot of the drink and the drugs came as a subsidiary of that. Yeah. Um, and it just stemmed over years and years. And the more I didn't talk, the more I did drink. And then I found drugs, specifically yeah. cocaine. And then the more I didn't talk, the more I sniff that, and it got to a point where, yeah, like a coping that. mechanism. Yeah, it were it was very much a coping mechanism. You know, five nights a week. People um, just think, oh, I'm just doing it because I'm having fun, and they never ever think, why am I doing it? Yeah, why? And that's and, that's the thing. And then you stop. You yeah. actually stop at some point and take the time to think about why you're doing it, and that's when everything changed. Yeah. You know, at, at this point in my life, you know, I'd met Grace, who's now my wife. Yeah. Um. Well, I'm blessed to have met. And I've got kids. I've yeah. got three young kids. And you get to a point where, like, this harsh realisation happens and you think, these people are relying on me, yeah? And I'm just here shoving this shit up my nose. <laughs> you know, yeah. the top and bottom of it, that, that is what it is. Um, and it, then that becomes a burden I found. Because then I'm scratching at the surface trying to find the reason why. why and yeah. why, I've not, why I've dealt with all these other things. But now I'm not. De I'm refusing to deal with this. Yeah. What I'm doing is I'm actually doing this more. Yeah. And and yeah. It, it what? All well, right then. So obviously I know loads of people like that. Been there and done it. Took my year out. Went sober. Um. And I don't know. I can't even say. I think what 
probably same as you. No really traumatic happened for me to think, wow, I need to stop drinking. I need to reset. I think it was just a build up of a time. Like I weren't focused on my business properly. I weren't focused on my kids properly. I weren't focused on myself properly. Something just clicked in my head. I don't know. It weren't nothing major happened. I'm not sure about you. You can, you can tell me in a minute. But something just clicked. I thought, I don't want to be doing this. Like, I need to deal with whatever I'm trying to mask with, the, with this drink and this drug. So I just completely obviously went sober. I only told myself I was going sober for a year, which yeah. I only have done. Um, but in that process, I did actually delve inside and obviously find found out that why mine were a lot to do with like childhood trauma, yeah. um, abandonment issues from my dad and stuff like that. Um, so it's still a healing process. I'm obviously 18 months in still, but that year of, of peeling back and, and stepping back out of what I was doing, be able to peel back and and find out the why has just helped me massively. Yeah, yeah. I did my year and then I've, I have started drinking, but I've got a lot more self control because if I feel sad or angry now, I won't have a drink. I am actually drinking happily. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like I've had loads of stuff go Huge on for the last few yeah. weeks. Yeah. So I've been drinking. I thought, no, I need a weekend off. So I went out the other Saturday and didn't drink. Yeah. The weekend after I had another thing. I thought, right, I'll do. I'll have a drink on that one. This weekend I'm not drinking. Next weekend, I've got at a festival. I won't drink all the three days. I'll do one. Then I'll, I've got sort of the year out helped me massively. Obviously, I'm still in a massive he healing is forever, especially if you've had any yeah. childhood trauma. Obviously, you've had a, a lot of trauma with with your um, I, I just I stint think in any the kind arm. Of trauma. Any any kind. It's not even. It don't, people think trauma is like something really bad, but it's not. It's just an event in your life that's. Probably been a bit negative. Yeah, just mildly changed yeah, something. Mildly yeah, mildly changed. Yeah, so is people, it. people see trauma as something like drastic, but it's not always that. It's just something yeah. what's shifted your mindset to a sort of a negative route. And yeah. until you come back and unpick that, you, you know, people do continue to make them choices. So, I mean, I know you did. You went sober, didn't you, as well yeah, for I did. a bit? Is, what made you then? What was your turning point with regards to like, right, I'm not sniffing all this cocaine anymore. I'm not drinking no more. So for me, I, I had a. I just had, a, had an outburst at home, if I'm honest. It's one that I'm very much ashamed of. Just had an outburst at home. I got arrested. Came to that. Um, they locked me up. Um, spent 19 cells. Um, I think I might have spent a couple, to be fair. Went to court. Um, we got dealt with at court. Obviously, I went home. Just, I'm sat here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've, you know, I've never been back to prison. Um, but it just it made me take stock. And it made me realise that it just isn't worth it. You know, there's more to life than doing that. And I think I'd, I'd use that as a, a coping mechanism for a while. Um, and then what started out as, with cocaine, it always starts out as a bit of fun, doesn't yeah. it? I, I yeah. think, you know, yeah. generally most people, it starts out as a bit of fun. Yeah. We're mates on a weekend, a yeah. couple of beers, have a sniff, have a good time. And then I think the more and more you do it, it then becomes a coping mechanism for something that has happened. Yeah. Um, you know, I couldn't put my finger on what it was that happened. Um, I know you've just mentioned you don't speak to your dad, was it? Yeah, yeah, said. yeah. Um, well, yeah. I'm the same with mine. Yeah. Um, I had 20 odd good years with my dad. And then my son's nearly 10. And if my son was in a room full of men and my dad were there, he, had, he would have no idea who he was. Sad enough. And that... I'm ashamed of that. Yeah. I'm ashamed of him for it. Like I'm ashamed of my dad for it. Um and it it, it that gets to me. Yeah. That that does get to me. Um like don't get me wrong, me and him have no relationship and it's still sad though, and it's still there in your heart, isn't it? No yeah. matter what. I don't And and I kinda and I th that you know, that probably made a made it worse at the time because we'd kinda had a we'd kinda been speaking and had some conversation and things like that and then Again, it just disin like disintegrated. Just understand the decisions that were made. And I blew up. Yeah. Um, got arrested, and that were that were that. You know, I decided that at that point I was stopping drinking. Um, at this time, I was just getting into bodybuilding to uh, obviously at an amateur level, quite seriously. Um, and I just thought, right, I'm channeling all my energy in there and getting rid of all this negative energy of why I'm doing this. Yeah. Um, and. I just I decided that were it. So, obviously, you know yourself, 99.9% .9 of the time, you only do that when you've had a drink. Yeah. So I knew that for me to combat that addiction, I had to stop drinking because they go hand in hand. Yeah, they do. So I literally made a decision, I'm going to stop drinking. And I'm sure my wife and my mates 
were sat there at the time and laughed and said, there's absolutely yeah, <laughs> no chance that that is happening. <coughs> but two years, you know, over two years drugs, two years without a drink. Now, the point um, with the drink was to get myself to a point of where I was in control of what I was doing yeah. and the drink wasn't in control Probably. of what I was yeah. doing. Yeah, um, the decisions that you made. Exactly. So, coming forward in time, obviously I went to the Euros a couple of weeks ago yeah. and I'd always in my head made the decision that I would drink again, but it would only be for an occasion. Yeah. So, birthday, christening, someone's yeah. celebratory party, something like that. Yeah. And I'd gone to the Euros, went with two of my best pals, We've been mates since we were we were kids and still very best of friends now. Um, went out to Germany um, and I had a drink. Now, there was no real reason behind it except for the fact that in my mind, I felt like I was in control. So I wanted to prove to myself that I was. Yeah. So the first day, I think I had two pints and the second day I had three pints or the other way around, one or the yeah. other. Um, and do you know what? I was more proud of the fact that I could do that than the actual fact that I'd stopped drinking for two years. Yeah. Because I had them and stopped and had water or Diet Coke. And it, it felt like this, it was strange because it felt like this huge weight had lifted off my shoulders then. That like, actually... I'm in control. Yeah, I've proved a point to myself. Yeah. And I've actually gone and done it. And yeah, I were, I were happy about that. I know my wife texted me and said, I'm more proud of you. Than that for that as well. Oh, so that's, that, that's always nice. Yeah, to hear, it really you know? is. Just regardless of what I've ever done in life or what I do, she's always really supportive, and that's that's, that's what you need. You can't buy that. No, you can't. Like you, definitely you, not. You cannot buy loyalty like that. No, you and can't. any anybody that spurs you on to be a better individual is priceless in my. 100, I hundred percent agree. I'm still trying to find that person, but yeah, <laughs> it'll happen. <laughs> it'll happen. I'm not looking. So I'm all right about that's, you. that's the best way, you know. I, I know. I, mean, I wasn't when I met Grace. You know, it would. I wasn't, so I know that feeling. Yeah, you're um, just like, I'm just like, all right, on my own, someone comes along. Well, that's it. Someone's got to come al along and compliment my life. I ain't carrying yeah, no I think the thing baby is, man. I think the thing is with you as well, because you're successful, you've done well for yourself. Like, you don't need someone who's going to come in and disrupt. Like, yeah. it, it yeah. should be a person of value. That, yeah, that's what I mean. Somebody like, I don't want to be looking value, after some, yeah. yeah that, that you and that individual can and grow then together. Yeah, move together in life, and yeah. it, it makes your life better as a whole. Hundred percent. And that's that's I find a lot of people in life don't do that now. They're just happy. I know. With anyone, you know, I know a I few know. people like that's that. That's why I just have <laughs> to be happy. That's what I'm saying. It's like it's hard uh, work, but, but yeah. So I had a drink at Euros in Germany. So how do you feel then now going forward? So you've had your drink at Euros. You have literally smashed life. You've you've had the negatives. You had the positives. You've literally smashed this two years. So what? For you going forward with regards to obviously you're drinking, are you are, is it are you still doing the special occasion or are you not even bothered about it or um or do you feel like no I can do this no, now, I can do it especially I'm I can in control, that's what I, I feel like after yeah, a year. I, I agree with you, I can do that hundred yeah. percent. So it'll be occasional. Yeah. So it'll be birthday, it'll be christening, like I say, yeah. it'll be which is not like every weekend. Something like, like yeah. that. I won't ever go out again. You know, yeah. um, I can honestly sit here and say I won't ever go out again just on a random night out to Sheffield or yeah. Doncaster, have a skin full, come home right, trolleyed, yeah. come yeah. home trolleyed and spend the next day on over. Yeah. That I will never, ever do. Yeah. The only times I will go out and drink is on an occasion. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I may go out with all my mates or my yeah. wife to Doncaster or Sheffield. Yeah, I get you. No, They'll I get drink. you. Like, just like random every week. Yeah, They'll yeah. drink, I'll probably drive. Yeah, that's what I you know did. What I mean? well, that's what I did other weekend. Um, I can still enjoy myself. Yeah. It's just I'm choosing the setting that I'm doing it so I'm in control of it. Yeah, and that's, 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 all that that's what you did you did your few years for, because that's what I did my year for, for, as long as I could be in control. If I ever find that I'm not in control, I'll do the same reset again. Yeah. And that's it, because it does happen. You're like, you can go, like I obviously, were, like I just said, did a few weekends on trot, but right, I'm not doing this weekend now, so I'll have the weekend off. Yeah, I'll have it off. Whereas before I'd be like, yeah, every weekend I've got plans, I'll drink. I would never have done that if I'd not yeah. done that year. So sometimes it is good to sit and reset. So what would you say to anybody out there who... Any, any guy out there, and women, but are, are predominantly males, who's sat there thinking they've got no hope in that same drug drink cycle, like what would be your top tips for somebody to get out that the cycle of that? Like what would you say to do? So I think there's always a few things that you can do here. I think the first thing you have to do is you have to sit down, excuse me, and you have to stop and evaluate what's going on around you. By that, I mean your surroundings, 
the people, you know, your family, your friends, the people that you work with. Social what media. Social even. media is huge. Yeah. Huge. I, the amount of people that live their life on social media, and I can tell you right now, some of these people I could show you on social media, and I know their life isn't like that. Yeah. Yeah. 110%. Yeah. They're not kidding me. They, you know, they're only kidding, them, kidding themselves. Self. And I think that plays a big part in why other people feel down as yeah, well. Yeah, I agree. See things on social media. Why have they got this life? I yeah. went to school with them. Why are them. they in this happy relationship? Yeah, when why am I not? Every weekend. Trust me, don't get held up yeah. on that. Because we only share on social media the really good things. Unless you're like me. <laughs> I share too much. But <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's what it is. Yeah, but it? most people only share most the good things. The amazing the holiday, things. the amazing partnership. The, the that amazing is, meal that they've yeah. been out. Yeah, but then argued at the end of it, but <laughs> not the, speaking to them. But then yeah. at the end, they both got yeah. trolled, had an argument, yeah. slept in separate Good bedrooms. Beds. Yeah, I, And, and that's, that's it, it's yeah. a big part. So I think you need to evaluate, like, people around you, the surroundings you're in, work yeah. people, friends, social media, you're spending too much time on it, you're spending too much time divulging in your phone in general. Yeah. Um, and look at, at those things first. And then what you need to do is you need to start to eliminate things. So, yeah. I mean, I started... Uh, monitoring screen time on my phone. Yeah. Um, so some nights, me and my wife will be at home and we'll have nights where it's no phones. Yeah. Yeah. We don't answer his phone to anyone in regards to anything. We just sit, we'll watch a film, be in each other's company and just enjoy that. Now, whether yeah. that's me and my wife or me and my wife and the kids, Yeah. Um, either way, that's what we do. Um, you need to look at the people around you. By that, when I say work friends and normal friends, family, is anyone who doesn't bring value Anyone who doesn't bring value, anyone who just brings negative energy. Yeah. And if they do, you probably need to just distance yourself from them. Yeah. Again, you're going to gain something from that because you're not going to have this little negative energy and these little negative, you know, comments and influences being um, brought to the table. Yeah. You know, what you want to do is surround yourself with the people who are then positive yeah. around you. We're going to bring out the best in you, encourage you to make the best to bring changes. bring out the best in you. And the best in themselves. Them, yeah. And you have to find that, you know, niche of friends and things around you that work for you. Because that's the first step in taking a step forward. Yeah, it it's, is. It's putting positive steps in place. That's And that is the close, they are the closest things around yeah. you that you surround yourself with. So once that inner circle is kind of fixed, then it's about channeling yourself into something more. What do I want to do? What have I got? What do I get enjoyment out of? Or what would I like to do? And then, yeah. you know, channeling something. Who some do I want to be? Or, yeah, who do I want to be? Yeah. It's always a big question that you can yeah. ask anyone. Because nine times out of ten, most people will say, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what I want to do. <laughs> what do you want to do? I don't, I don't know, know what I want to be. Well, you need to take some downtime yeah. while you sat there evaluating. Self reflection. Yeah, to figure out what's your plan in life. Do you want to own a house? Do you want to. Have a job doing a certain thing. Do you want to study to learn a certain thing? You know, and, and you need to put some energy into the things that you value in yeah. that respect. And start channeling energy into that. Like, I channel my energy into bodybuilding because it's something that I love. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I live a bodybuilder's life every day because it yeah. can be a very selfish sport and I am not a very selfish person. Yeah. You know, sometimes my wife will tell you different. Yeah. <laughs> some <laughs> days. I'm sure, <laughs> yeah. you this going to like that's that. not true. But no, you know, I mean, even if I just use that as a, as a, um, you know. Like right. an example. Yeah, as yeah. an example. If I use that as an example, yeah. So I'm training for a show. I've got 16 weeks, we'll call it. I have to diet hard. Yeah, I've got to do cardio. I've got to train five days a week. I've got to not miss a meal. Everything's got to be weighed on scales, yeah. things like that. It can become very selfish, but I still take time out for her. Yeah. For the kids. We still go out. We still have a date night. Yeah. I might take a meal in Tupperware. Yeah. <laughs> but we still go but out and have in, a date yeah, night. Yeah. Whether it's cinema or well, that's out for where food. You, your passion and that's your time yeah. to channel so into that. I, I, I channel, I've channeled my energy into that, but I don't let it devalue my life. Yeah. So there's other things in my life that are more important. Yeah. And I don't let that hobby devalue that. Yeah. I, I find that if you're channeling your time into something you love, yeah. you'll find the time for everything else, else that you love yes. anyway. Yeah, it will happen naturally. Yeah. Um, and I think then it comes down to to hope. You know, um, the people that feel crap or feel down or feel this, feel that, 
it's always someone worse. And put yourself for a day in their shoes. Yeah. You know, think of someone who doesn't get the luxury of three meals a day. Yeah. They can't eat. We often you take know. it for granted, don't we? Like, Massively. we just look at us. Like, obviously, I've been in a place where I've been up here and I've been down there, and then all I'm looking at is this down here, and I'm thinking, but you sometimes you have to step back and think, wow, like, I've got a home, I've got healthy kids, I've got, I can walk, We've got I can heating. see, just little things like that. I can feel, I can touch, I can feel, you know, the people think, oh, I've got, I, I do speak to a lot of people, uh, obviously, on my app and stuff, and they're like, but I've got nothing positive, and I'm like, but you have. But you've got You're life. talking. You've got life. <laughs> you're talking. You've got, you know, you're talking, you're communicating, you can breathe. Like, that is positive. There's somebody out there who's would be, like, would want would to love be where you are. To be in your shoes just for a few Even days. Even though it's so hard when you're swallowing in self-pity, I've done it. Yep. But obviously, I don't stay there. And, and people, I don't stay there because I'm able to do that. And not everybody can. So it's so difficult when you are in that position. But I do think that... You've just got to sit and think, right, I am breathing, I am here, I can touch, I can feel. And even just build on those, and people don't see yep. those as a positive in their life. While, they actually don't. So while ever you have life, yeah. you have opportunity. Yeah, completely. You may not feel like you have, Yeah. but at some point you will create opportunity for yourself yeah. or someone will help you create opportunity. So while ever you've got life, you should be grateful. Yeah. Because you can always... That's your first positive. It is. In it's anything. the very first positive. And there's always something you can do to make that better. Yeah. Now that comes from in here, like yeah. we spoke about earlier. And it's about you standing up. Yeah. Surrounding yourself with the right people and the right things. Taking accountability. Yeah. For yourself thing, or your yeah. actions and moving forward. Forward, yeah. And I think as a man... So from a man's perspective, um, a way that we can do that is by talking. Yeah. Because it's it's put to the or it's put on the back burner so so much. This, you know, stigma. thing about yeah, the stigma of men don't talk. The modern man should be able to talk. Yeah. Irrespective of who you are, what you look like, what you do. You know, for us as males, for me, that is the number one absolute top of the list thing that I advise that I would give any 100%, man, I agree. no matter what it is in regards to, yeah. please talk. You know, I've, I've been through, um, my mum's brother, my uncle who didn't talk, who hung himself, yeah. you know, at 40 odd year old. Um, it's so common. So, so and common. And it's becoming these more days and more that, common. Yeah, it is. We're, we're men and women, but a lot of yeah. men. And we're, we're seeing it more and more. So my, the, the, the number one tip for me is, Firstly, get your inner circle correct. Yeah. Surround yourself with the right people and get rid of the negative ones and then talk. Yeah. Talk to these people. Or talk that to you strangers. Trust, or Even like we picked on earlier. Yeah. Anybody. Talk to strangers. Because yeah. I had times when I didn't think I could like talk to my mum, my sister, yeah. my brother. Sometimes whoever. it's harder to talk to people that you're close to because you feel more judged. So I went and rang a doctor. Yeah. And I went and sat in a doctor's yeah. office and sat and sat with them. Do you know who I actually got the most therapy from? And it sounds daft. I'm <laughs> my probation officer. Really? Well, no, it don't. Cause that, I sat I, with her for a yeah, year, week yeah. in, week out, and we spoke about everything. Yeah. And although she doesn't know it, she gave me some of the best therapy sessions yeah. that I've ever had, unknowingly. Yeah. Because it gave me an outlet, an outlet to get things off my chest that I maybe wouldn't have. Um, and I, 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 I just feel that we're in a, a world now where the modern man shouldn't be talking, yeah. but it should definitely be advocated for. I think it's for. getting more advocated, advocated for. I mean, my inbox is always open. Like, I'll have people message me, like, honestly, like, they're like my friends. Like, I talk to them on a on a day-to-day -day basis, like, more than I do some of my friends. And I'll, then I'll get messages saying, do you know what, just having this conversation with you helps me so much every day. Yeah, so yeah. that's why I always reply. A lot of people don't want the social media, but, you know, just one, even men as well, they'll be like, oh, yeah. your, your post... It's like made me think in my head, and I bet yours yours does yeah, as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Even just us talking openly on uh, social medias as posts, we, you don't know how much difference you're making to someone's life yeah, just course. actually being like that. So I just feel like be a, everybody should be open to talk to other people and not be closed off yourself, so people are more comfortable speaking. Yeah, That's what I think. I am like on social media. I like I know uh, you you know me on social media, and you you see me on social media and things. I don't paint my life to be. What yeah. it is, and I live a very private life on social yeah. media. 
my social media consists of like bodybuilding yeah, and, and me pick, yeah. having random rants at certain things yeah. and like and stuff like that. And uh, so I don't paint my life up to be anything that it's not. And I find that people do find that quite a common ground because they're speaking to someone on there who's not putting himself above them. Yeah. Um, but literally just on the same level. Like I'm just an everyday person. Everyday guy, yeah. Going around doing everyday things, you know, that means something to me in my life. Speak to me. Yeah. You know, come to me. I, I've given hundreds of bits of advice on there um, for free. Yeah. I don't want anything for it. You know, that's not what I'm about. Yeah. If I could help it, someone improve their life, then I will. Obviously, with the things I do with coaching and things like that, that's a completely different yeah, aspect. Separate. And that's yeah, it's not like what me. I'm I've got a diet business and obviously yeah. I charge for the diet business and the time, but my inbox and I speak to people like openly, like I'll just have yeah. and quite just, a lot of time actually. I spend a lot of time more yeah, doing that. General everyday, helps, yeah, general so everyday conversation when yeah. someone's like, how do you do this though, day in, day out? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you how I do it. Yeah. This is how I do and it. it. Just gives, and if it just gives one person that see that, that hope, I think it's just all worthwhile Listen, if, anyway as a person. If I can help change one person's life yeah. or just that's the day or the think. week, then that's a success. Like some people, like, yeah, people who don't want to see your post or whatever, I get it all the time on mine, but they don't like, I'm like, doing my videos all the time, it might be something about what's going on in my life, but the amount of messages that I get, what people are like, oh my God, that that's just made my day, da, da, da. Can you, are you posting today? But so many yeah. people do, so it can be a really good place, depending on who you follow, but a really good place, social media, and I know it can be a negative place for some people, but there are some like accounts, I do it, I, I love to watch other people, people love to watch me, it's just one of them places where you've, like you said, you've got to pick the right accounts and pick the right Course. places, so if you feel like you're gaining something from it, follow them, talk to them, people yeah. will talk back. Like I, I've started taking people off mine or a bit. Yeah. Who like just bring negative you value, have to and it's not because of the bring, they're not like bringing negative value to to like my life. Yeah. Um, but they're just bringing negativity to yeah. everyone else around them, and I think that you know I I don't like to be around that those type of no, people. No, because it just it gets in your your mindset. You the people you it speak costs, to. It costs nothing. To be to nice. Help. No, it don't. Or to be nice. And just general day-to-day -day things. If people come to you with a general day-to-day -day question of how do you do this? Yeah. Like You've got some people so that in well, your position all the go, time. Well, yeah. yeah, download this for th <laughs> Yeah, download this for this. And, and yeah, I know what you mean. You know, it uh, twenty-four yeah. ninety nine for my ebook. Yeah. I'm like This is how come I do on. it. This is this is someone yeah. who's generally asking out of you know, probably concerned for their own yeah. life and their own day-to-day -day things, you can just get that bit of yeah. advice for free. It ain't going to work. Yeah. It's only going to improve them. It's only going to yeah. make them feel better about themselves. And that's a good feeling, isn't and it? it? Yeah, it's a great feeling. That's it's what I love. I do love feeling. that about, like, obviously your social media. You're always putting stuff on there and stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm hoping that, obviously, this podcast will help so many people. And I think it will. Like, people will... I'll obviously look at you and think, oh, if, if this guy, because obviously you're a muscular guy and, you know, people have a perception of that. I'm just hoping that this podcast will help at least one person think, right, I need to speak out. I need to speak to someone. I can do this. And I think having you on, it's like going to help so many people. So thank you for coming on. I hope so. Um, I hope so. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, like, it looked like we've just picked up on. It's yeah. one of them where you hope that just... If one individual listens to it yeah. and they can take something away from it, yeah. then that, that's, that's all that matters. That's a it? great thing. You know, I, I, am I blessed? Yeah, I am. You know, I've got a, a wonderful wife, three wonderful kids. I've got good people around me. You know, I get to come and do things like this yeah. with people like yourself who again are inspiring to others. And it is a blessing to be able to do that. It really you is, know, yeah, 100%. It, it, it is, because there's people a lot worse off in life. But all I would say to anyone who does watch this is... Please speak. Yeah. And if it feels like there's nobody that you can speak to, then just come to me. Yeah. Speak to me. Just Yeah, can you tell us your Instagram name as yeah, well? Yeah, so just it's Chrissy underscore calls. Yeah. On uh, Instagram. Instagram, yeah. Um on Facebook, Sunday name, Christopher what my mum did. But you can find yeah. me on both. And yeah. and you know, if you feel like you can't speak to anyone, then please just speak to me because I'm not saying that I've been through everything in life. But 99% of what people have been through, You've been through. I've been there. <laughs> yeah, and that. I've felt that way. Yeah. So I can 
relate to what yeah. you're going through and I will do my utmost. If I don't well, know the answer, I will do my utmost answer. to go and get the answer or find the answer. So, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. It's thank been, you for coming been on. wonderful. I can't wait for down. it to, to watch it back. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, like I said, it's been wonderful to sit down and we're blessed that we get to do things like this. 100%. And hopefully help someone change their ways yeah, and change completely. their life. Yeah, completely. Thank you. Thank you.